I'm Colette Kuliana, Senior Director of Payer Relations with the National Hemophilia Foundation. I'm pleased to be able to discuss some opportunities to optimize the quality and cost of care for health plan patients with hemophilia with Jim Kenny, Manager of Specialty and Pharmacy Contracts with Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, one of the largest not-for-profit health insurers in New England area with more than 1.2 million covered lives in Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Let me ask you, Mr. Kenny, from your perspective as an insurer coordinating care for patients with hemophilia specifically, how have payer policies and methods evolved and adapted to changing healthcare environments? Well, I think first and foremost, we've seen increased awareness of hemophilia as a disease and the various treatment options available by product as well as location of service has changed quite a bit over the last few years. We've had a number of new agents that have been launched to the market and certainly it's a high-cost area from a health plan perspective, particularly if we have individuals with inhibitors who are high utilizers of factor products. So it's really been an educational process, if you will, for us to try to understand where these patients are being managed, how we can possibly layer in some care coordination and so forth to get the maximum value from the products and services that are being delivered to these patients. So then what would you see as the critical barriers to optimal patient care and then how they can be addressed? Well, certainly uh, one challenge is the nature of the illness. Certainly the random acute bleeds that can occur in patients obviously have to be treated immediately and require a sometimes aggressive response from the healthcare team, as well as patients who may have developed inhibitors that require large volumes of product or may require more expensive alternatives or those who don't respond to the normal factor dosing. I think also just the process of patients having access to good care. If you have patients that are remote, not near an academic medical center or a hemophilia treatment center could create some challenges for those patients in terms of being able to receive appropriate care, perhaps that may be prophylactic to prevent bleeds or even access to acute therapy. You raised some good questions. And do these barriers align with the concerns that you've heard from providers and patients, would you say? Well, I think everybody's concerned with compliance, particularly with prophylactic therapy. Certainly providers are. Patients are concerned with being able to obtain and maintain access to their specific products. There's some discussion in the market about the possibility of perhaps trying to choose preferred agents or trying to identify agents that may be the most effective but also uh, more cost-effective from a plan perspective given the expense of the area. And I think other barriers are educational. And patients need to understand, and certainly caregivers of children with disease need to understand the nature of the disease and how it needs to be treated and the appropriateness of getting on that prophylactic schedule. And certainly we can coordinate that through our partner pharmacies in the network, especially pharmacies that deliver this care to make sure that patients on prophylactic therapy are actually on that schedule and, and appreciate the fact that a delay of a day or two in the, in the interim period between dosing could be substantial, could cause some substantial risk of a bleed. Well, then that leads me perfectly into my next question I have for you, which is, since you did talk about aligning with your partners, the specialty pharmacies that provide product to your patients, can you share an example of Harvard Pilgrim implementing pharmacy contracts with both specialty pharmacy providers external of the hemophilia treatment center and specialty pharmacies located within the hemophilia treatment centers, such as main hemophilia and thrombosis center, to successfully overcome these barriers? Sure. So we have preferred specialty pharmacy partner for our commercial population. That's the CVS specialty. They've done a great job for us over the years by providing high level of service, a good nursing component, and we have a quarterly review, if you will, of activity. So we know exactly what's going on with each individual patient, what's occurred, whether they've had bleeds or not, what type of services they've received. And then in addition, we've also partnered with the hemophilia treatment centers actually in Maine, and we're working actually with University of Massachusetts and University of Connecticut as well. So we'll have three of these arrangements be completed within the next few weeks. But the main arrangement is actually in place today. And essentially, we have an arrangement with a 340B pharmacy that they have contracted with, and we coordinate the delivery of product to patients affiliated with the main hemophilia and thrombosis center through Redchip Pharmacy is the preferred mm -hmm. pharmacy for that system, and we're going to also use Redship for our UMass and our UConn relationships. And what brought this to our attention was we have a population of patients in four New England states, certainly Maine included, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Connecticut as well, 
And we had some high utilizers in Maine patients and identified an opportunity to try to coordinate the care of these patients through the main HTC. And by doing that, also engaging Redship as the provider of the factor product at a contracted rate and gaining that benefit, if you will, of having the full services of the HTC to engage the patient and also of the benefit of getting the factor products at a competitive rate. So what are some key communication methods and tools that can link health plans and or specialty pharmacy strategies with hemophilia treatment centers to improve the alignment and consensus of treatment uh, regimens and approvals along with, as you said, the comprehensive care methodologies that are implemented in the hemophilia treatment center? Well, coordination of care is critical in this patient population, obviously, and the need for other health services with awareness of this condition is important. So I think the HTCs, from our view, provide an excellent opportunity such that if a patient needs dental services or other specialized services, the HTC is well aware of that. They often have providers readily available for referral purposes that are going to understand the complex nature of managing a uh, hemophilia patient. And from our perspective, we also engage our own internal case management group to work with these patients. So they do get flagged as patients that are eligible, if you will, for care management services. And it's really educating our own internal case managers to be able to handle the hemophilia population and then working with the care coordination folks at either the HTC or perhaps at some of our large integrated networks or some of the hospitals to really identify the patient the types of services they need, and then to get, get a coordination of all of those services to make sure that the patient is being managed appropriately as a patient with a significant rare disease. So then what are some of the key implementation processes that you talk about the coordination being so important, and we obviously hear that across the board, but managed care organizations would need to adopt system-wide, perhaps those used in other high-cost diseases such as cancer, which would reduce treatment variability through the promotion of a comprehensive care model that you see in the hemophilia treatment center? Well, clearly we want to ensure that the appropriate product and service is being delivered to the patient, and it involves coordination of really multiple benefits because hemophilia products can be obtained through the medical benefit. We also allow the distribution through the pharmacy channel, although the drugs themselves, the factor products themselves, are still considered medical benefit, but having the ability to get at that data. Uh, you know, the medical claims data historically did not contain the level of detail ideally needed to assess specifically which product the patient might be on. We have certain J codes that are billed in the system that have shared arrangements, so you have multiple products that can be billed under the same J code. So we're working, and our colleagues across the country have done this, to have the capability of having NDC level detail in those medical claims because you really need uh, good information in order to identify the appropriate patient and develop and promote programs and services to treat them. What type of data and documentation is needed, Jim, then to show potential cost savings that can be achieved through the comprehensive care model delivered by HTC for members with hemophilia? Certainly, the cost of factor is the key driver for these patients. You can look at uh, cost per unit and if there's different rates between different uh, channels of distribution, but also the medical claims history as well is an important resource to determine that. We can look at uh, bleed rates. We can look at ER visits, hospitalizations, things of that nature to determine whether or not a patient is doing well. And, and one area I'm particularly interested in from the plan perspective is outcomes contracts or value-based contracts. And we certainly would welcome the opportunity to do an outcomes contract on a hemophilia product to get some type of guarantee that it would actually deliver on what we've seen in some of the clinical trials for some of these newer agents, where the annual bleed rates were 1 or 1.2 or 1.5 or whatever it is. So if a, if a company was willing to guarantee that, that gives us greater confidence that the product is actually going to deliver. But we can actually measure that information based on the medical claims data we have in our data warehouse. So then can you recommend ways for plans to streamline the health plan pre-certification and prior authorization processes that plans often require. This just seems to be a big challenge for some of the dispensing pharmacies for hemophilia specific patients. Well, I think in a nutshell, we need to separate the optics component from the effective elements of the process and really simplify the flow for providers and patients. So it certainly is, in a lot of cases with the prior authorizations, you know, you'll have certain elements, requirements, 
that really from an optics perspective look good. It looks like there's some management going on and maybe folks can use that to say, see, here's all the good work we're doing here. We've got all these steps in place. But in reality, if a number of those are automatically going to be a yes answer that's going to move the patient along the process of approval, then really I think eliminating that extra work, if you will, extra workload requirement and really just getting down to the core essential elements you're going to need to approve the patient for a particular drug for their type of hemophilia and get the benefit going. So let me ask, would having a dedicated contact at health plans, from your opinion, improve communication with the hemophilia treatment center? On both sides, really, having a dedicated contract at the treatment center and at the health plan. It's always a great idea if you can have a care coordination person or a discharge planner in a facility that can interact with someone at the health plan. And certainly with our care management team, if we have dedicated nurse case managers who are hemophilia experts, and you don't need a lot of these, obviously. We don't have thousands of patients here. It's a small number of patients. You know, that makes perfect sense because each time a new patient perhaps comes into the system, you could actually preempt the process, if you will. If an HTC was presented with a new patient, knew they were a member of our plan, and they had a contact person in case management, they could outreach and really increase that coordination immediately. Because typically for our care managers, the way they would identify these patients is through a retrospective claims edit that occurs. So there's a, right. there's a claim process that runs weekly or so. I'm not sure if it's weekly or monthly, but it runs on a scheduled basis, and it identifies a high-cost claimant. So when one comes right. across the hemophilia, they get the referral over to care management. So if we could do that in advance, obviously that would be a good thing. So then how can the cooperation of all parties be achieved to implement required changes? And what do you think is the most important first step? We all share a common goal to improve outcomes in the hemophilia patient. So basic communication to establish roles and responsibilities is going to be important so that we can all get the job done and do it efficiently. And really eliminating some of the waste in the system. So if patients have a fear that they might run out of factor and they have excessive quantities of factor that they're storing up and they're not using. So we can coordinate with the specialty pharmacy and improve distribution to make sure that the patient doesn't need to be worried about that process. And we can educate the patient and our own internal staff to say an appropriate amount of factor or appropriate dosing of factor as such. We certainly use assay management as a standard approach as well, making sure that the factor that's dispensed matches as close as possible, the requirements of the patients, but coordinating with providers. If, if it is a challenge, if there's potential waste in terms of that, that's a simple savings to the system, and, and as long as we're not putting the patient at risk. So then let me ask, is your overall vision of ideal patient management and provider relations in the future as it relates to hemophilia care, how do you see your vision, I guess, in the future? Well, given that this is a rare disease, I think the patients that can be managed through a hemophilia treatment center or another qualified location or through a specialist certainly is going to make sense. Establishing that coordination with our care management team also is going to be critical. And certainly the health plan or the insurer can drive preferred products in cooperation with the providers that are delivering care to the patients and ideally achieve the best outcomes and the lowest costs. That's excellent. Would you have any recommendations for those plans out there that lack someone like you and trained staff and accesses to resource uh, better manage hemophilia? What would you recommend to them? Well, I think it starts with education and a willingness to learn about the disease and how it's managed. Certainly resources like the National Hemophilia Foundation can be extremely helpful as part of this process. And the manufacturers of all the products have tremendous resources and services available, whether it's you know educational programming or medical science liaisons who can come in and deliver a customized educational program to a care management group or a pharmacy management group certainly is, is very important. And without question, when you're faced with a patient with inhibitors of that million-dollar-plus claimant, that generally gets everybody's attention very quickly. And what, what I would hope is that the reaction to those when they do occur, and fortunately it's relatively rare, it's not going to simply be to clamp down on the system without having a more intelligent, educated coordinated approach to reasonably managing those patients to make sure that they are getting the best care, but also appropriate care and eliminating waste of resources, time, and efforts. I would say that we end on an excellent answer there. And thank you so very much for your insightful comments and your time, Mr. Kenny.